Nana na chefa de Deus. Já catou. Standard de fogo. Pata ora escuro, encurta com um num pano carga cima. Para a narga cima, encurta com um da tampa, tampa da folha na ocatunga. Pata ora com um da tuca pata, pata pata um boi tuca tunga, pata tunga tampa ica. Smoking kills. It's not only killing you, the smoker, but it's also killing most people that are involved in production of that cigarette that you are smoking. It's killing those people who are handling it in production. And it's killing their hopes, their dreams. So their very dignity is being terminated by this production of the cigarette that ends up on the market in the West. Many of the cigarettes smoked in Europe and the US contain tobacco from Malawi, the fifth largest producer in the world. But in Malawi itself, 80,000 children are paying for this addiction, forced by extreme poverty into illegal labor that can cause poisoning and disease. Shepard lives with his family in northern Malawi the center of the country's tobacco industry. During the rainy season, he cuts, picks up, and sorts leaves for hours every day. By his side, his sister, Jessie, and other village children. They're between 9 and 14 years old. Shepard's father, Limond, owns two hectares of land. He started growing tobacco, thinking it would bring in more money than traditional food crops. But his dreams quickly turned sour. Growing tobacco is very labor intensive. Three times more people are needed to produce the crop than for corn. But the returns are so small, farmers say it's only economical to produce using child labor. In Malawi, it's supposedly forbidden for children under the age of 14 to work. But for Shepard's mother, Josepha, it's the only way to sustain the family. So the tobacco industry is definitely here in Malawi, as much as it is contributing to the country, as much as it is a good thing that Malawi has something to export, but for most people that are really involved in the tedious job of producing that, they are really trapped in poverty and they have no way out, and it is impoverishing them hugely. Malawi is one of the poorest countries in the world and relies on tobacco for almost 70% of its export earnings. 
companies such as British American Tobacco and Philip Morris, makers of some of the world's best-selling cigarette brands, take advantage of this dependency, loaning money to peasant farmers for fertilizers and pesticides, specifically to grow tobacco. But a bag of fertilizer costs around $15, a small fortune in a country where few earn more than a dollar a day. Josefa got a loan to buy six of them this year. To pay it back, the family now has no choice but to grow tobacco rather than food. The family produces nearly 1,500 kilos of tobacco. But once they've paid the loans back, they're left with only $200 a year. Grandparents, parents and children all live under the same roof without water and electricity. But each year, encouraged by the tobacco industry, they believe a better life will be possible. The situation is even worse for those who don't own any land. Tenants who lease a small plot have to sell their tobacco crop to plantation landlords for tiny sums of money or for food and accommodation. At the bottom of the production line, tenant farmers like Swafi are the biggest victims of the system. In November 2004, I was in the city of Limafodia. I was in the market and I was in the market and I was in the market and I was in the market. I was in the market and I was in the market. But Tumazua, tita mba ugeri daoti, mitengo kukushu ni kujia ikaduruga. Na osu mabwana mpamina makandi mpavu zoti, atipase na feso mitengo. Zika kakuti za indabunu, pachaka, tima peza be, kafifite, uluka fote. Drama zika, zose zima bwana ngati za banji. Six people in the family will have to live off that $100. It means that even the small children